Hello, ACE members. This is Mike Hutkins of the Greater Phoenix Chamber. Uh, I wanted to give you a brief overview on the governor's executive budget, something that you could use to inform your board members or your membership in general. Uh, just something that was fairly short and easy to um, understand and convey to your uh, business members. So given that, uh, we'll start off with the first slide, which provides a bi overall big picture uh, glance at the FY 2019 budget that was provided by the governor. So as you can see on the top line there, uh, spending above the baseline, um, the governor has about $271 million of additional spending priorities that he's proposing. Um, this is displayed a little bit differently between the two budget arms. Um, but for these purposes, we're going to go ahead and use the JLBC um, number. So that's about $271 million. The governor also has about $129 million of FY 2018 and 2019 fund transfers that he uses to pay for the, some of that additional spending. He has enhanced revenues out of about $55 million. Um, he has some savings through agency efficiencies that he's pegging at about $79 million. And then finally, that leaves um, the uh, budget at the end of FY19 with a cash balance of $67 million and a structural balance of $4.8 million. And as a refresher, the structural balance, balance is just the difference between ongoing spending and ongoing revenue, something the legislature focuses on um, pretty closely down there. Uh, the next slide just shows the revenue differences between the JLBC and the executive. Uh, you can see that the, they're mostly pretty close except for fiscal year 2019, uh, where the JLBC has a 3.6% forecast and the executive is a little bit higher than that, up 4.4. That translates into about $90 million of extra revenue that the executive proposes. Um, so they are going to have to reconcile that when they get into their budget negotiations. So what does the governor spend his um, additional priorities on? The next couple slides show that in more detail. I won't go through all of these, but I'll just hit on some of the highlights. You can see the top line there, the biggest number is the K-12 additional assistance restoration. Uh, this is the attempt to restore some of the recession era cuts um, that K-12 schools took when the downturn happened. The governor has about a five-year plan to restore $371 million to schools, uh, and this is the first step um, in, that, in that effort at $100 million. The governor is also proposing to add some additional money for building renewal for school construction at about $35 million, and then putting a down payment on the construction of those schools, of new schools, at about $5 million for this year. Um, you can see some additional education initiatives there, including JTEDS, um, computer science program, and then funding for the Department of Education's um, computers. Um, moving on down to university funding, the governor is proposing about $8 million um, uh, for university spending that they can use for anything they so choose to do, and that's about 50% of the fiscal year 18 um, amount, but as you recall, um, the, the universities received the, about a billion dollars in bonding authority last year. Uh, moving down, one thing I'll mention, you've probably seen it in the newspapers, a lot of talk about the Department of Corrections inmate health care system and some issues they've been having. Um, so the governor is proposing additional resources to um, address that inmate health care contract of about $30 million. Uh, moving over to the next page. Um, there's a couple items I want to highlight on this page. Uh, the first one is the State Employee Health Insurance Fund deposit. This is the fund that is used to pay in state employee health insurance claims. There have been a number of sweeps out of that fund over the last few years because um, it was overfunded. Now it's um, getting down to sort of the lowest levels it can. And so actually this year, in fiscal year 2019, it's requiring an additional deposit of $10 million from the general fund to cover those expenses. And then the other thing I'll mention is the in increased employer retirement rates. Many of your own individual cities out there are dealing with the um, issues with the increased uh, public safety pension costs. The state is no different, uh, and that's going to cost the state about $31 million this year, uh, the biggest portion being the um, Department of Corrections and the Department of Public Safety. Uh, so those um, all add up to about $271 million, as I mentioned earlier, in new spending policy initiatives that the governor is proposing. 
Moving on to the next slide, uh, really quickly want to talk about some revenue changes. Uh, the governor is um, looking to bring in some extra revenue into the state. Uh, the first um, item that he's proposing is to expand the DOR tax fraud prevention staff to sales tax, and he's estimating that to bring in an additional $30 million of revenue. And then overall, Department of Revenue Enforcement, Collection Enforcement staff, he's adding some new, new officers there, and that is estimated to bring in about $25 million. And they also are providing some additional administrative changes, especially on the lottery side of things, um, increasing some lottery machines um, at, at the grocery stores and so on and so forth. That estimate to bring in about $11.5 million. So you add those up and you get about $66.5 million of increased revenue. And as you may recall that the governor mentioned in his state of the state address, he's looking to increase the veterans pension income exemption. There's a couple bills at the legislature that are proposing to do this, and that has a $15.9 million impact. But as you can see there, it's not an impact that takes effect this year, so it will be factored into this year's budget. So what are some of the pending issues out there between the governor and the legislature that they're going to have to work out before a budget gets passed? Um, this slide uh, intends to just highlight a few of those. Um, the first one is the JLBC has some higher um, K-12 projections than the governor of about $14 million. Uh, similarly, the JLBC has some higher Medicaid caseload projections of about $37 million uh, beyond what the executive has. Uh, the executive has a higher estimate of monies that are unused over the prior year of $4 million. And I mentioned earlier in the revenue slide that the executive has about $90 million um, in higher revenue than the JLBC. Uh, something to note, 1% uh, revenue change either way equals about $625 million over three years. So just a small change in how the economy does has a big impact on the state budget either way. Uh, there's still some pending litigation out there that could have a fiscal impact to the state. Uh, another item that the legislature and the governor will have to, to consider doing something on either this year or next year is the federal tax conformity. Uh, there's uh, different estimates out there on what that's going to actually uh, bring into the state or what it could cost the state, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but I think the range is of about 50 to $250 million. Uh, so no one really knows what that's going to do just yet. Um, and then the governor has proposed to bond for school construction rather than paying cash. That will be a big item for discussion in this session. The final page goes on to the ending picture. It gives you a little overview of the differences between the executive and GLBC baseline budgets. I'll just focus on fiscal year 2019. Uh, you can see the executive, as we saw in the previous slide, had a cash balance of $67 million and a structural balance of $5 million. Uh, the JLBC baseline that includes those higher caseload numbers and lower revenue is actually forecasting a cash um, deficit for this year of $108 million and a structural balance of a negative $11 million for fiscal year 2019. So they have a little bit of work to do to, before the final budget is, um, is agreed to. Uh, the caseload numbers, the revenue, and the spending priorities will all be um, in discussion as the legislature moves to forwards. Uh, passing a budget for fiscal year 2019. Uh, that wraps up this presentation. If you have any questions, my contact information is on this last slide. Please feel free to reach out, and I hope everyone has a great day.